What's up, e-bikers? So the uh, Denagua e-bike company based in uh, Dallas, Texas, just announced three new models to the lineup. Uh, they include the uh, Folding Bike 1, a cruiser in both step-through and top-two frames, and an update to their City 1 model, the City 2. These new models are available at denago.com and Denago dealers throughout the U.S. Joining me from uh, Denago, their director of e-commerce, Justin Christopher. He's out in L.A. there. And Justin, how's it going today? Great to have you. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you again. Definitely. So how's the e-bike business these days? What are you guys up to? Chris, we are busy uh, with a lot going on. I have uh, some new bikes to tell you about and upcoming trade shows and uh, some uh, new dealers that have come on board with Denago and brick and mortar bike shop. So all kinds of uh, exciting stuff to talk about today. Nice, nice, nice. And you guys have a new showroom too, right down in Texas somewhere, I think? We do. They have a new, uh, calling an experience center that's at a, uh, an indoor shopping mall in Frisco. And you can walk in there and get expert guidance from our team and see uh, all the new models on display. Excellent. Yeah. And one of the reasons I like you guys is you have sort of US-based customer support here. Uh, to me, that's important as an e-bike purchaser, but just give us a quick uh, snapshot what that looks like. Yeah, thanks for bringing it up. Obviously, it's very important to us. Uh, anybody who's been around the e-bike space, whether you're a manufacturer or a consumer, it's probably not a big secret that all of the uh, e-bikes and a lot of the subcomponents come from Asia, right? And uh, we think a crucial step in making sure that consumers are having a good experience is being able to reach out to somebody in their time zone that answers the phone and answers email and is available to help them, whether they need help with assembly or tips on where to ride or to help solve a technical problem. Uh, we just think it's one of those those crucial pieces. So yeah, we're staffing up in the uh, the Dallas, Texas area where we have you know distribution uh, warehouse. We have the experience center in the mall and then also basing our customer support team out of the Dallas, Fort Worth area too. Very cool, very cool. Uh, you mentioned some events coming up. So where are you guys gonna be? Yeah, we have uh, two trade shows I wanted to let you know about. The first one is uh, the Cab to Show, which is in New York, New Jersey next week. And that is a, a dealer only show or a prospective uh, you know, trade show. Uh, so our existing partner bike shops can meet us there, but also any new potential dealers that are thinking about bringing on an e-bike line into their bike shop. Uh, we'd love to see you at Cab the next week. That's at the, uh, at the Meadowlands Convention Center. And if you're a consumer and you're locked out of that trade show, we would love to see you at the Sea Otter Classic. That's pretty much the largest bicycle uh, festival inside the United States. And Sea Otter is also kind of starting to serve as a, uh, an unofficial trade show. Lots of brands doing new product launches there and uh, tech, tech seminars and training clinics. So we'll have uh, you know, our new spring 2023 product line on display at Sea Otter. And we're working on uh, finalizing a demo program at Sea Otter. And one of the things that's really cool is in addition to the, the trails at the Laguna Sacra, Sacra Raceway, they're also gonna let you um, ride e-bikes actually on the racetrack for a limited time while you're there. Oh, really? So you may be able to come, come by the, uh, you can stop by the Denago booth. And uh, if we can fit you into that window, you can take the e-bikes out to trial actually on the racetrack, which is pretty fun. That's cool. I went to the Electrify Expo uh, last summer and the only thing annoying about it was that it was in a giant parking lot at the uh, NASA Coliseum, but every company had to sign, you had to sign waivers, every company. So you're like waiting in line and you're just signing your life away to like every different vendor out there. I assume it's kind of the simple price. Probably I believe, similar. I believe uh, Cabda and Sea Otter have both solved that problem. So you only have one waiver when you get into the venue and then you are ready to test ride or demo any vendor that's there. So good, good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, much better experience. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, let me. I'm going to share my screen. Let's go into your some of your new uh, new models you got here. Let me just get that ready. What do we got here? Okay, Justin. So here is your e-bike pay. By the way, it's Denago.com for the audience. I'll put a link, of course, in the description. Uh, I'm an affiliate of Denago as well. So if you do purchase one of these, you do help out the channel. So appreciate that. Um. Uh, let's just give a high-level overview first, uh, Justin, of your bikes. Um, you, of course, I did your uh, Ruger City Model 1 last year. You got an update to that coming out. You've also got a fat tire now. And um, 
uh, some other uh, commuter model as well with uh, front suspension, I think. But let's look at the new bikes okay. here, which um, I'll just give us a quick overview of the lineup itself. You got a pretty wide variety of e-bikes here for different sizes, right? That's right. You know, we started last week or last year rather with the uh, City Model One. That's the version that you did the video review on. And since mm -hmm. the last time that you and I have chatted, we introduced two more models: uh, the Commute One and then that Fat Tire uh, Fat Tire bike. So you know, Denago is really trying to build out a complete product line for your entire family, right? Uh, if you want to shop online and have a you know a bike delivered to your home that you're going to do the assembly on yourself. Or if you want to walk into one of our partner bike shops to buy an e-bike, whatever kind of riding that you do, we want to have a model that, that solves that problem for you and gets you out there on the road. And from a timing perspective, it just happened that um, three of them came to market all at the same time. So yesterday we launched the Folding One, Cruiser One, and the City Model Two. If you want to zoom in on the Folder, maybe we can start there. Um, it's one that I'm really excited about. Yeah, uh, obviously folding e-bikes folding e-bikes is a is a booming market and we think we're doing it just a little bit better you know uh, one of the key concerns with the folding bikes is people are buying these because they're living the rv travel life or the van life maybe they're a college student that has limited storage space and here's a bike that you can fold up and stash inside a coat closet or easily drop inside the trunk of a of a small sedan and a lot of them on the market are heavy, you know? Um, many brands have chosen to go with four inch wide tires, uh, which are fun to ride, but they're adding weight and adding rolling resistance. And then the frames can be quite heavy. So our folding bike comes in at 62 pounds. And 62. we've really tried to, yeah, we've really tried to shave weight. You know, it, it's, it's fun to talk about a folding bike and then it becomes sort of meaningless if you can't lift it up to put it in the trunk of the car or carry it up a flight of stairs, right? So that weight is really important. So sort of split the difference. This bike uses a three inch wide tire. So you've got still that feeling of a lot of grip and a lot of traction that you get from riding that wider than normal tire. Yep. But it's not the, cra but not the crazy wide four inch wide tire, which... Um, they're pretty fun to ride again, but uh, you know they add a lot of roller, rolling resistance and and they're adding pounds to your bike. So we think we sort of hit the sweet, the sweet spot with the the three inch wide tire. Yeah, well I know uh, uh, suspension front suspension on this one. You know, weight is one of those considerations, and another big consideration is trying to deliver a value price to the consumer for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Denago is in that space right now of being in that one to two thousand dollar retail price point and there are great e-bikes on the market that you have ridden that sell for six eight ten twelve thousand dollars and they're really fun and you can have an amazing experience but those are way beyond the price range of a lot of your average rider right and denago really has a philosophy of being able to produce quality value priced e-bikes that are accessible uh, you know, to that person maybe who is just getting started and doesn't want to invest in a six, eight, ten thousand dollar e bike just yeah. yet. How much is but, a? How much in terms of the? Uh, let's go back to the uh, fork for a second. How much heavier is a, a standard suspension fork versus the traditional rigid? Roughly, I'm just curious. Oh, uh, with the twenty inch wheel size on a bike like this, uh, five pounds would probably be typical for a suspension fork, whereas rigid fork could weigh a pound and a half or two pounds. Hmm. So and it's a, it's a every, every, pounds, yeah. every little bit adds up, you know, a suspension fork is just one of the most obvious components, but yeah. uh, is the handlebar aluminum or steel, uh, which telescoping seat post and saddle should we use? Is there one that could be a little bit lighter while still providing the same comfort? You know, that decision is made all across the, the bike to help deliver a lower weight. Yep. Uh, the other thing is when you're designing a, a bike like this, we want to deliver as much value we can at a, at a given price. And as you scroll through, you notice a lot of other add-on features like integrated lights that we're really proud of, right? Yeah, so, that's interesting. Talk about that. How do you, uh, I've seen very few integrated lights on e-bikes before. I'll talk about what you guys do here. Yeah, you know, I think it's becoming increasingly important and we want to design the right bike for the intended use of the person who is going to be using it, right? When you have a three inch wide tire, those have a lot more air volume. 
air volume gives you suspension action, right? So wide tires can be a complement or even a substitute for a more complicated, heavier suspension fork. And that allows you to put those dollars elsewhere in your bike, frankly, right? And we think for the person who's gonna be using this, maybe a college student to get around a campus, somebody that's doing, um, driving an RV from campground and they're gonna drop their RV and sort of dock and then they wanna go into town uh, on their e-bike, riding in those dim evening or even dark condition, we think something like lights and a quality kickstand, built-in rack, built-in fenders are more, you know, uh, more key features for that, that type of riding. So if you take a look at a typical uh, e-bike, a lot of times they come sort of stripped to hit a certain price point. And this one is really the opposite of that. It's sort of decked out with everything that you need. I think if you scroll down, we've got a photo of the rack that comes with this model. A really nice uh, oh, yeah. rear rack with a wood, de wood deck on it. Uh, really, really uh, attractive, visually nice stuff on this bike. Definitely, yeah. One of the other um, things I want to mention too, like I, one of the things I hate about e-bikes is having having to put on the front headlight. <laughs> this eliminates that, so I, I love that feature. Um, I think most of your bikes it's have nice when you just good when you just take it out of the box and turn it on. Nothing yeah. to install is really exactly. really nice. It's, it's always nice. One of my uh, pet peeves of putting together those uh, those e-bikes. I think most of your e-bikes come with a fourteen amp hour cell, right? Is that am I correct? Uh, most, but not all. The uh, the fat tire bike, for example, comes with a larger battery. Okay. Uh, but that 14, 14 amp hour for us represents kind of a good sweet spot between having enough range for the rider to be able to do the kind of riding that they want uh, between charges, you know, without uh, increasing the price of your bike too much. Obviously, the battery is one of your most expensive components on, on an e-bike, right? So there's a balance there. That's and good. again... Um, come back to that weight, right? You, everybody wants to have the largest possible battery on their e-bike. Sounds really appealing at first. But if you're only doing short to mid-range rides, that means you're dragging around a battery that might even be larger than you needed, right? And batteries are another one of those components that are, that are heavy. So we think 14 is kind of a nice balance between super range and not enough range. Yeah, I agree. And you got LG cells in there. Are they also, is it also uh, UL certified or anything on the batteries? They do. Uh, we can get into that uh, uh, separate conversation or offline. You know, Denago meets and exceeds the current UL standards for, for e-bikes. Testing and safety is something that's been in the news lately and it's very important to us. And we think actually the testing and safety regulations is something that's going to help us differentiate from fly-by-night competitors you know so we're in favor of that Absolutely. that being said the, the testing standards themselves are sort of in flux you know i'm sure you've read some of the the news in the industry recently there's sort of different groups that are advocating for um 2849 versus 2271 is one of the different uh testing methodologies you know do you mm -hmm. test the whole bike as a system with the charger and the battery and the motor, or do you test the battery alone and the, uh, the charger alone? So it's something that we're following very carefully. Yeah. Uh, and everyone, you know, you do a lot of e-bike testing, regardless of what make or model or brand you ultimately end up choosing to ride. You, you have to own responsibility for best practices for, for safer charging. Right. So, Definitely. Safety is the whole thing from design to manufacturing to the way it, the way it get, gets used, and it's just critically important. Definitely. All right, let's move on to your next bike. Uh, by the way, the folding uh, model is fourteen ninety nine. Let's move on to the Cruiser here. It's a cool looking uh, frame you got going on. Tell us about this one. Yeah, I'm really excited about this one. You know, uh, obviously the price of an e bike is a big barrier to a lot of people, and you and I know that you can go on Amazon or eBay mm -hmm. or go to a swap meet or a flea market and you can buy an e-bike for less. Mm -hmm. But what you, what you can't get for less is an e-bike that is designed and tested with a brand that stands behind it where you know you're going to have a great riding experience. And for $1,099, uh, I'm so excited to be able to get this bike out into the world for a thousand bucks. Yeah, that's a and great uh, price. 
not only can the consumer buy that from us on denago.com, but if you walk into a partner bike shop, bike shops just don't have anything in e-bikes in this price range for the most part. So right. we think this is just going to be incredibly pop- popular for that consumer that wants to walk into a bike shop. And, and to be able to buy an e-bike that's supported by their local bike shop for assembly and post-sale service, help where they need it, guidance where they can ride, uh, that just doesn't exist at that price point with a lot of our competitors. So we're really excited to get this onto the market. Uh, it comes in two frame styles. You know, you have your traditional top tube frame style, and there's also a step through version of the same bike. And, you know, this is a bike that, yeah, yeah, you can just jump on this and have fun, right? And this is for the rider that they just want to get out there and be active, get out and enjoy some sun and some fresh air. It's not about how many Newton meters of torque the rear hub motor can produce, right? Uh, this is a bike that, you know, visual style feels friendly and familiar to them because it looks like the bike that people rode during their childhood. It's got that wide padded saddle, so your rear end is not gonna hurt. It's got that big upswept, swept back handlebar that puts you in a really upright, comfortable riding position so you can look around and see the scenery while you're riding. They're just fun to jump on and ride. Right, so uh, we're we're super excited for somebody that wants to do a pub crawl or ride on the the beach bike path. Uh, just just great for that type of riding. Yeah, nice color too. What are the uh, color choices in this one? Let's see here. It's got that that blue one, which is teal. We got a, mm-hmm. a pink one, and then it also comes in a uh, a gold color. If you toggle over to the other product page with the yeah, there we go. Yep. Three colors there, and they just. Uh, they look so sharp. Uh, we have one of these front and center at the Experience Center in the mall in Frisco. And that gold flake one is just so eye grabbing for people that walk in. They always, what is that? You know, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, colors, nice are like, type. colors are like an excellent way to sell an e-bike, in my opinion, because most, most e-bikes are, you know, black or gray or whatever. But throw a splash of color in there it really catches people's eyes, right? It's really distinctive. It's easy to see when you're out on the, the path and it does prompt a lot of what is that, you know? And yeah, even at only 10, 1099, you know, you're still getting a lot of nice features. It comes with the fenders that are painted to match that pink or blue color. Nice touch. Uh, really sharp looking bike. Yeah. yeah. Those are those are metal fenders, I assume. They are metal fenders. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. Okay. Let's take a look at the City Model 2. What's new with that bike? Yeah, so City 2 is probably the model that you're most familiar with because you've already done your video breakdown of the the, the City Model 1. So this is kind of the same uh, intended use and riding style. Uh, The City Model 1 last year was the uh, top rated high speed e-bike from Good Housekeeping. And this, uh, just like the City 1, the City 2 is class 3 speed. So up to 28 miles an hour on pedal assist, 20 miles an hour on uh, throttle and some of the same features of the city one that you rode, right? That adjustable stem to put you into the upright riding position, uh, but with some upgrades throughout. So we go to an eight speed drivetrain instead of a seven speed drivetrain, a little bit, a w- little bit wider tire. This moves up to a 2.6 inch wide tire, okay. a little more shock, shock absorption and grip. And then you get that integrated battery. So it's a little more stealthy, right? With the battery hidden in the down tube, it's a little less obvious that you're, uh, you're riding an e-bike. Uh, and then to touch on your note about uh, suspension forks uh, from before, you know, some riders do want suspension. It's gonna make your bike heavier and more complicated and more expensive mm-hmm. to trade for some comfort, right? So uh, our product manager did something super nice with the City 2 and that's right there if you pause, suspension corrected geometry with a, a suspension corrected fork. So this bike ships with a rigid fork, but it's the length of what a suspension fork would be if you put a suspension fork on this bike. Mm-hmm. So for that user that, that does wanna upgrade to suspension in the future, you know, you're not screwing up the handling of your bike by putting on a suspension fork that's a lot longer than the, than the stock fork. So a nice little touch. So it's upgrade friendly for somebody that um, wants to get a, a good bike to start out with and then make some tweaks to, to suit their riding style. Very nice, very nice. Eight speed drivetrain, okay. Is that a paddle shifter? 
Yeah. Say it one more time. Is that a paddle shifter you're looking at? Yeah, you might call it like a rapid fire uh, hmm. style push button. Yep. And this one sells uh, so for. Those are thirteen ninety nine. Okay. Yep. And you got two, just like two the sizes cruiser too, model. Right? Two sizes. Yep. You know, when you get into bikes in this one to two thousand dollar price range, uh, a lot of competing models from some of our competitors are one size fits all. So we're really excited to bring uh, sizes for better fit. If you toggle over to the City Two Step Through, you can check out the colors on that one as well. Also two sizes. And uh, I just I just want to touch briefly on the Step Through frame design. You know. Yep. Uh, I, I think you and I have actually had this conversation before, you know, people call it this a girl's bike and uh, it's not a girl's bike, no. you know, step through frame designs are definitely becoming increasingly pop increasingly popular for both men and women. And uh, those days are gone. So while you might have described this uh, when you were younger as a girl's bike, um, step through is definitely for many riders now the way to go so with two sizes and step through you have that crazy ultra low standover height so for anybody that has difficulty throwing a leg over a saddle or maybe a balance challenge where they can't quite balance on one leg while they swing their leg over their saddle they offer this in the step through option as well but then for somebody that wants that traditional look you know we have a top two version too yeah very nice very nice all you can buy the one you're looking at there is Oh, I was just say the one you're looking at there is uh, called Wavy, that colorway. And the photo on the website really doesn't do it justice. It's sort of one of those oil slick finishes where it looks kind of different depending on the the angle that you're facing and whether the yep. sun is catching it. So that's a good one to go check out that colorway at one of our uh, partner bike shops to see the way that one really looks in the sunshine. Definitely. And how many dealers now do you guys have in your network uh, for Denago? We're going to talk about that. Yeah, we've been adding them at a, a real good clip since the last time we chatted. So Denago is now in uh, more than 70 brick and mortar retailers nationwide. If you click on the yep, dealer locator, you'll get the map there. We just rolled out this integration with a software service called Locally, and it's really cool. So if we use that first example there of Mineola bicycles, you can actually click uh, on participating dealers and see right what they have on their sales floor down to the model size and color before you drive over. So oh, wow. you can take a look at the model, model that you're interested in and actually browse their inventory down to the size and color level to see what they have you know, ready for, ready for test rides. That's a nice touch, I like that. Yeah, works really well. Excellent. Well, we appreciate the, uh, the info today, Justin, and good luck with the new sales. Anything else you wanna uh, head out with as we, uh, as we start to wrap up? No, I don't think so. Thanks again for uh, taking the opportunity. It was a pleasure to uh, chat with you again. Obviously, anybody with questions, they can hit us up on denago.com. Uh, we'd be happy to get back to them and help them find the right, right, right bike for their riding style anytime. There you go, everybody. We'll check them out at denago.com. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone.